I'm going to go ahead and hit the recording. It's recording now. So thank you for attending today's um, meeting. This is the ambassador orientation for CSU processes and protocol. And we'll just do a little um, um, roll call and let everybody just say who they are and where they live and kind of so so everyone can get grounded to everyone else if that's okay i'm maria feith i'm in colorado and my job is um to support the ambassadors along with a handful of other things and uh why don't i hand it off to rick and then rick you give it to kim and then we'll bounce around from there okay sounds good hi everyone it's rick um here in dallas it's uh hot and steamy and humid so Hopefully it's cool where you are, but um, most of you all know me. So look forward to seeing you guys next week, whoever can be up there. So Kim, your turn. Hi, I'm Kim Shibata. I'm at the CSU Office of the Chancellor in Long Beach. I will be the one to help you submit any of your travel claims or invoicing or other matters that need to go through our office. Um, I think that's it. Thanks, Kim. All right, well, let's start with Helene. Hi, Helene Mancuso. Um, I am the TACT Project Director at Luzerne County Community College in Northeastern Pennsylvania. And if anybody has ever seen the office, that's kind of where we are um, in the Scranton Wilkes-Barre area in Northeastern Pennsylvania. And it is likely, likewise, hot and steamy here. It's about 83 outside, so no cool weather in the Northeast. Um, Alexandra? Uh, hi, Helene. Hi, hi. everybody. Uh, so this is Alexandra Shiner, and I am a part of the Northeast Resiliency Consortium for the next week, loud and proud, going out with a bang. Um, and I'm involved in the Storytelling Network, obviously. I'm here in Patterson, New Jersey. We're about 10 miles away from New York City. Um, and I want to give a shout out to Helene and NEPA. I think you did a, I think you did a proud, Helene. That sounds just like <laughs> So I'll pass it over to, uh, I see Christian. I think you're sick. So we don't, we're going to keep the germs uh, wherever you are, Christian. Yeah, keep, I'll keep them in Washington, D.C. Uh, I promise I won't get all, well, <laughs> I hope to not get all of you sick next week when we're all in town. As Brick was describing, we're taking as many medicines as we can. So I promise I, I, promise I will do the best to be well in Washington. I don't have to travel, so I'm just gonna take the Metro down to Judiciary Square on the red line and walk to DOL on, on Tuesday. So uh, yeah, I'll be very, very excited to meet you all. It's Kim, hello. We've emailed each other 700 times. It's great to hear your voice. <laughs> Uh-oh. Christian, you still there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I hit I hit mute. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. So I, I look forward. To, I look forward to seeing you all. And I don't know who's next. Who else? Is, I guess Kathy Spada. Are you next on this list? Here? I am here. Greetings, everyone, from beautiful North Central Wisconsin. I'm here in Wausau, also uh, finishing up a round three uh, project. A lovely interface is coming to a screeching halt on September 29th. But looking forward to seeing everyone. Uh, next week as part of the Storytelling Network uh, and presenting with uh, my dear friend Nicolette um, and my president will also be at the plenary session, my colleague's president, uh, talking about uh, interface and tact in Wisconsin. So really excited, excited about, about that. Us. That's fantastic. Well, thank you, everybody. Did we miss anyone? I think we've got it. Okay. So thank you so much for taking some time out today. We wanna to make sure that you have all the information and support in place in order for you to be reimbursed for travel and for you to understand how to submit for invoicing. So that is our purpose today. Help you get any um, kind of um, floating questions answered at this point. We'll do a little quick follow up at our meeting next week on Wednesday afternoon at 3.30 Eastern time in DC. Christian has found a place for us to meet. It's called the National Building Museum. Is that right, Christian? That is correct. It is the National Building Museum, right? Yep, right, right, uh, 
right down the street, basically from DOL, a couple, a couple blocks. So it shouldn't take us too long to get there. But uh, yeah, great, great area to sort of hang out, sit in. Big, great hall. Uh, I'm gonna go scout out some some tables to make sure we can be accommodated. There's a there's a cafe, or the Firehook Cafe inside of the museum, but they have chairs and tables sort of kicked out from the from the cafe in the great hall. So we should be able to crash it without any without any problem. It does close at five, but we're gonna end our meeting at five anyway. So we should be in good shape. That sounds great. Okay, thank you for that, Christian. We appreciate that local support for sure. Okay, so without any further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Kim Shibata, who has all kinds of good information for you. And feel free, this is an informal kind of a conversation. Um, Kim, would you prefer the questions taken at the end or as you go? Um, it doesn't really matter. I, I, I don't anticipate a lot of questions, but maybe, as I go, if something pops up, you can definitely just ask in the moment so that we can just address it then. Okay, sounds good. <coughs> All right, Kim. Okay, okay so um, after, so with the upcoming trip, I would suggest uh, saving all of your receipts that you'll be using to claim any kind of reimbursement. Um, we will need the hard copies so um, w as soon as you return, uh, maybe you could put those in the mail. And um, if we can get them as soon as possible, then the processing will go you know, quicker. But um, so after you return, you'll pull up this document, as you can see on the screen. And I've tried to highlight uh, some of the sections that you may want to pay close attention to. The, the form that I sent you, I left in some of the information so that you would know where certain things would go and how typically um, you would input the information. Um, this is how our travel department likes it done. So it's very clear and they understand because they're not with you on the trip, you know, they can kind of figure out what exactly happened. So um, at the top, you'll see where you put your name and um, you can leave the department and division as is and um, add your telephone number as non-employees, add um, either check yes or no, um, leave consultant and leave my name and my contact information. Um, you'll add your address and uh, pretty much leave everything else as is on the top section. Um, so uh, in this second section, this is where you will add all of your specific information having to do with the trip that you took. So um, the month and the year, and then they like to break down by line um, the day. So uh, for instance, Maria took this trip in July from the 10th to the 13th. Um, we'll also need to know what time you left your house. So time in this section is the time that you actually began your trip, meaning if you needed to be at the airport two hours before, then take that into account when you list the time. Because um, I don't know if you've had any time to read over the travel policy, but um, for meals and things like that, it, depending on the time that you left, you will or will not be reimbursed. So um, the time you also return would be, you know, whatever time you set foot back into your house. Um, take it into account, like if you, if you have to make any stops or anything, then that may not, you know, be part of your, of the time. But um, we like to know exactly where you're leaving from and where you're going. And then assuming you're staying in the same location until you leave again, then it would be the opposite for uh, the day that you left. Um, lodging will be broken down by day, the cost per day. And um, for meals, if you, if you would refer back to the travel policy, it will tell you your allowances. So we will need to know, we will need your receipts for your meals. And let's see, your cost of transportation, meaning how you 
like whether you took a train or an, an airplane or you, you know, things like that you would list in here, but we booked that for you, I believe all of you. So you would need to list the cost, but then in the bottom, you would need to um, take it out of the amount that you would be reimbursed for. You'll need to list the type of transportation that you used. Um, if you drove your own car to the airport, then you would need to know, you know, personal car, airplane, all of these things. And if you go to the bottom, there's a tab where you can uh, read through how to list some of these things in there, what abbreviations we, they like you to use. Um, let's see, mileage from your house to the airport. Um, if you do check luggage, um, please put the amount in the business expense line right here um, in number eight. And please put your private vehicle license. Um, and also the reason for your trip will go right here. And I think that's it. This is a very, um, there's a lot of things in this form, so I know it could be a little overwhelming, but does anyone have any questions after going through that? So, um, Kim, I heard you say that they need receipts for all their food. Is that yes, they do. even if they um, do not go over the 50? Yes. Okay. They, yes. Okay. Well, because it's not a 55 per day, um, it's not just you get that a blanket without, uh, it's, it's really um, more that's your limit. They won't pay over that amount per day, but they will need to know what you purchase. Um, a lot of it also is that um, we don't reimburse for alcohol, things like that. So um, they need to make sure that what we're reimbursing for is um, adhering to the travel policy also. So it's kind of what also Jerry would like to see. He'd like to see the amount, you know, we're spending on everything. So. Okay. Hey, Kim. Yes. And Maria, I just wanted to stress about the $55 a day for food. Um, it's best if you keep it like, you know, under it's 55, correct? It is um, no more than 55, but- Right, so it should Jerry be like- had, So Jerry yeah. said that he, he'd like to see it all. So just as a, a good way of thinking about it, just keep all the receipts for the things that you buy and just, you know, when you're inputting it, just if whatever's f under 55 will be, typically reimbursed unless, again, on the receipt, it shows something that is not, it doesn't uh, align with the policy, then it will not be re reimbursed. And, and I'm just saying this from personal experience too, and just to make it easier on yourselves and Jerry, when he ha has to approve it, if you can keep it under 55, so not like right on the mark of 55, but like if it's 40, you know, 54, 50 is good. Um, but like, you know, if it's right at 55, I think it gets bounced back, doesn't it, Kim, or something like that? Because of the, you, no, you want to keep it at, Oh, um, I think that's more Under. for the e-travel, Rick. Um, the paper claim is a little more simplified, so. Okay. I wouldn't worry. Yeah, I would. I would just keep in mind that it's it's not so much um, a per day cap, but it it we really want to see exactly what's being purchased. So this is Helene. I have a question about that. Um, in the GSA, I go by the GSA rate, and it differs by destination city. So what I'm hearing you're saying, it doesn't differ by destination city. The 55 is through the through the whole United States. Correct. Okay. And Kim, how about um, hotel rate? That cap on that. Um. So we do have. Um, we do have a limit, but then depending on where you're going, that does change. So kind of a case by case basis, but, but we would always know and book it for you. So you wouldn't have to worry about that anyway. Um, well, wait a minute. Are you, 
let's let's be clear about that. Are you saying that you're going to book all their? Oh, that's right. That's right. Um, we would know how much it would be, but yes, you would you would book. We would know exactly where you guys would be staying before. Correct, Maria. You would know. Yes. So you would be able to communicate that to us. Right, but as they're searching for hotel rooms, um, how do they determine what is the cap? Um, for most states, now you can always ask me too, but for most states, it will be two seventy five before taxes. Anything over that will need um, you'll need actually an, an exception, which needs to be um, signed by various people before you're able to be reimbursed for it. So, but if you're, I believe like somewhere like Washington DC or San Francisco, New York, places that typically may be over that, um, they are more lenient, but um, I wouldn't say you can get an exception anytime, any place. So definitely um, we'll, it would be best to discuss pr prior to booking anywhere. Yeah, Christian, no five-star hotels there, buddy. <laughs> Spa days, yeah, not gonna happen. <laughs> oh, what? I thought, oh, man, I had so many things planned. I really had so many things planned. Oh, wow. Darn it. No, no many petties. <laughs> no many petties today. But, oh, I, I, do, I do have a question, particularly to what Helena just said. And I, too, have been following the GSA for meals and, and hotels and such. On the on the form itself, as it, as it pertains to that fifty four ninety nine or that fifty five cap for food, if we do have a sixty dollar meal, do we still put it in the under five and then back out the difference in less amount paid by? What happens then if you go over fifty five, but you and you want to see every single item purchased, correct? So then, what what do you do with the difference? I guess is is the question. Um. You know what, let me check and see how they would like me to do it now. Um, before, people have just put it in and then we'll just reimburse up until $55. But let me see if they want you to do it, if they want to only, I'm not sure about that because you typically, we don't have people that, you know, spend a lot over. So let me confirm and then I will email all of you the, the final verdict on that. Okay. So Kim, how about in the, this uh, text box below purpose of trip, et cetera, how much detail do they want from the ambassadors? If you can just list again, the dates of travel and then um, what meeting or conference um, or reason for your trip or your travel. So, um, for instance, on the screen, it says Skills Commons Team Strategic Planning Sessions. Something like that is fine. Um, you can also list, if you'd like, again, just to list it again, um, if there's a specific place that you went or a specific hotel that your conference was held at or something that would really just give a really good snapshot of where you were, why you were there, you know, something like that, so that it helps the processor understand why you why why you're claiming this trip okay and i don't know if it was made clear previously but the airline your cost for your airline is is prepaid so kim takes care of that part and you're not reimbursed for that however they want to see it listed on this form and if you'll see um it is listed under uh number 7a and then it, if you go down to subtotal, you'll see that it, it follows it down, but then less amount paid by the CO, that's, um, so that will back it out. And in this case, they paid my hotel room, and so that number two was backed up, okay? Just wanna make sure that's obvious. And how about source of funding, Kim? What do they need to know for that? Source of funding. So it, this should pretty much stay the same. Um, it's how uh, they bill your trip back to the right budget line. So I wouldn't change anything in the account, the fund, the department ID. Now the project, um, this grant line, 
um, this trip that you're taking in September, um, using this number is fine, but after September 30th, this number will change. Um, so after September 30th, if you take a trip, um, it, it'll, instead of the six, it'll be a seven. But I can, I'll send you an email to remember that, okay. to remind yourself of that. That's helpful. And then the amount um, at the left, this is usually the amount that you are being reimbursed for. Um, I'm sorry? The, the amount on um, the very left-hand side, oh, you would take the, num the, the amount, um, the claim total, amount due employee, and then you would um, put it here as well. Okay. Okay, you guys, so now's a good time to ask questions. Um, ask, even if you think that you should know these answers, because I'll tell you, it's, a, it's frustrating once you kind of are back and forth with Kim, and she, she doesn't have time to do a lot of that either. So um, Rick and I are happy to help you as well. And, and for the first one, I would suggest that you run it through me. And um, then after that, and you feel comfortable, and I feel comfortable, you'll send it to Kim, and, and, and there's a chance that she will send it back to you, but please just CC me, send it directly to Kim, and CC, CC me if you don't mind. Um, so let's ask questions now, because I can tell you from experience, this looks like it's pretty plain and simple, but um, it, there's a learning curve to it. What do you got, anybody? Kim, this is Alexandra. I have a quick question for you about the um, electronic and hard copy stuff. So I'm hearing you say that the receipts need to be sent to you in the mail hard copy. What about for this finalized form? Do you guys do like electronic and hard copy too, or what's the preference? Because I realize that there are signatures that are also included on here. Um, so what I would do um, is send it to like Maria had mentioned, run it by Maria first. No signatures or anything, right? Mm -hmm. Just um, your first draft. Send it. If she s it approves it, then please send it to me. No signatures again yet, so I can look at it. And then when I, if I don't have any changes, then yes, you can add your um, electronic signature or you can, if you prefer to sign it and mail it to me, that's fine. Or scan it and mail it to me, that's fine too. But um, don't don't approve of anything until um, it you hear from me that it looks good to go. Go ahead and um, sign it, and then on my end, I will print it out to have Jerry sign the hard copy. Okay, sounds good. Okay, let me just make sure I I heard you say that um, the way that you're hoping we hear it, Kim. So you want them? So they're going to send it to me, and we'll do a little quick kind of make sure it looks good then they're going to send it to you before they sign it i would suggest that only because if you think it's good to go and you sign it then we'll have to redo it and then it goes back to you and then you sign it and then you send it back to me so i mean if you're pretty confident that it looks okay after you look at it maria then we you know we you don't have to send it to me first but just out of the back and forth that we've gone through when, when you first started filling these out that it just seemed like, oh, you know, you have to sign it again. So yeah, it would okay. probably be best if it just, if I took a look at it before you actually, the, the, the person that's sending it to me um, did, gave the final approval by signing it. Okay. And then Kim, um, you're wanting original receipts, um, but so they're probably better off sending all of this via USPS as opposed to scanning this form. Yes. Um, yeah. If, if that, it, you know, sometimes people, your processes are different, but yeah, if you can just send it all to me, that that's fine. If you want to, if you're in a hurry and you want to drop the receipts in the mail first and then follow up with emailing this to me, that's fine too. Um, I have to go through, you know, everything piece by piece anyway, so before I submit it to Jerry, so I'll put it all together on my end. Okay, so um, so I don't know if 
I'm just going to put a note. Uh, it's, I, I've written sign and mail sign form and receipts to Kim. But if you choose to scan and send the form right away, that's fine. Just know that nothing is going to really happen until she has the receipts. So it might make sense to send it all at once. And then she's not trying to collect it from different places. Hey, Maria. Yeah. This is Christian. Yeah, working as a remote employee in the past, in, a, in the quite recent past, uh, yeah, I, I did that. I did a scan. I scanned everything, emailed it to my grant accountant, and then I sent all the originals because they had to have it. Twice, the oh so great USPS, USPS lost the mail. At least you had some backup. So there is also an That's opportunity good. of it to get lost. If you have a scan and an electronic copy, at least you still have that. And the originals get lost in the mail. It happens. So maybe a dump, just a double. So, you know, double jeopardy type of situation where you have both and you have the copies just in case it gets lost. Could be a good part of the process. I think that's smart. Good yeah. suggestion. Yeah, really smart. Okay. Are there any other questions about the travel? Okay. And so if anybody from the USPS is listening to this recording, I apologize <laughs> now. I'm not saying that our agencies don't work. I'm just saying it happens. Uh, they just yeah, put that out there. So when it's time for you to travel, and, and a number of you have already experienced this, you will send, um, I, I will make sure that Kim has a, a heads up knowing that you're going to send her um, a flight request. And they request, CSU requests that you fly with Southwest as often as you can. You cannot always do that. Um, because Southwest doesn't fly into everywhere, but they're they're easy to work with and they don't um, charge for rescheduling and all that business. So that's the purpose behind using Southwest. So you will send Kim your preferred flights and uh, keep in mind that that um, Kim will take a look at that and do her best to get you on those flights if the cost of the flights really is the best deal that, that we can pull off. So, so do your best to um, you know, seek those, those lowest cost flights, but make sure that the flights that you are choosing are the ones that are gonna really, um, I don't want you to fly a red eye and then have to do a presentation in the morning. Does that make sense? I want you to be healthy when you get there and feel good and, and that kind of thing. So we don't expect you to, you know, be all strung out just so that we can save 30 bucks. It's not about that. So, so um, keeping that balance in mind, does that, does that make sense, everybody? Yes. Any questions about that? So, so you'll send her a screenshot of your preferred flights and she will do her best to work with you on that. And then there's always questions as those, as those, you know, case by case incidences come up. Rick, what am I missing? Um, I, I don't know. I think you've covered pretty much. Um, I think maybe here to see if people have questions um, until they actually do it, you know, um, it's kind of hard to anticipate because okay. probably some of you will have different questions related to you know kind of how you're traveling and things like that if you're using uber versus your own car somebody dropping you off that sort of stuff parking all that kind of good stuff you also need to submit a map um, if you are parking at the or well either way if if you're parking or if someone takes you to the airport you'll need to submit um, like a map quest map or whatever so that they have documentation of actual mileage and it needs to state the mileage on it If you Uber, if you take yeah, that's, a, that's a question. That's a question, Maria, about that. Yeah, using using MapQuest.com, and I I don't know, Alina, is that I don't know if that's the one that's GSA approved or whatever. But it seems like we've always had to use MapQuest for whatever reason. Not Google, not no one else other than MapQuest. If that's the preferred choice for the mileage from to and from you know home to airport, we don't uh, have of course. Um, We've never had a problem with people using Google Maps or MapQuest or okay. any okay. any of those. Okay. And with Uber, a lot of times, it, you know, if you go into your receipts, you can actually see and just copy that, you know, just uh, save that. And it has a map of your um, 
directions that you went, even, you know, when you're commuting around DC or some other city, just, just okay. add, add all that with it. And, and if you are taking Uber to and from the airport, um, you really just need to keep your Uber receipts. You don't, you won't be paid for the miles. Uh, so Kim, you don't care about the map for to and from airport with Uber, do you? If you're not claiming miles, uh, we do not need any type of map or anything. Right. Okay. Yeah, it would just be if you're driving your own personal car to the airport and back. Right. Yes, that is correct. So Kathy Spada is asking about um, tip percentage and incidentals. You want to chat about that? Um, I believe in the CSU policy, it should say um, incidentals are reimbursed, I believe, $7 a day. Um, is it listed in that instruction sheet, Kim? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just checking right now. Um, it is seven, well, so anyway, it is $7 a day. But for tipping on your um, transportation, uh, I, I don't believe there's a cap. But again, everyone will be looking, there'll be a, a number of uh, eyes on it. So if there's anything out of the ordinary, they will flag it and we will have to come back and ask you why you, you know, tip, if it only costs you, you know, $5 and you tip 20 or whatever, why, why that would be. Okay. So, you know, everything within necessary and reasonable, just like with what DOL, I mean, you can consider this DOL money and if it's in compliance with DOL, there's a good chance it'll be in compliance with CSU. Okay. Um, what's that say, Christian? And or send the completed form to us to see the example. Oh, yeah, just I would just I just wanted to just look at one of the columns again. But yeah, if you're going to send after this call, if you're going to send out an example to all of us, just so we see what one looks like before we submit, that'd be great. Just have a just have a copy of the example of it. I agree. I'd like a copy of that sample with the highlighted, so I can just print it out and keep it in my file. So yeah. she she's okay. She's I believe she sent that to you. I did send this, the, what I had put up, but I, it was not highlighted. So I can highlight a version and then send it out. It would be similar to the one I just, I sent you guys this morning. Great, great. Okay. And um, let me- Wait, Kim, I don't think I got anything this morning from you. So can you confirm that I'm on your distribution list? Sure. Same here. This Sorry. is Alexander. I'm not traveling oh, next week either. Yeah, so maybe that's why. That's why. Yeah. That's why. I'm sorry, who was Helene Mancuso? You aren't uh, traveling. No. Okay. That's not why next you're not week. On it. So I'll okay. send it to you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So here's the form again. Um, and it has some examples in there. And you would blank those out, obviously. But on the second tab, here are the instructions. And um, so all else fails, you know, go here. You're probably gonna need them by the time you, you get to this place. Um, but it's pretty well laid out and, and can help you. But really, Kim is very knowledgeable and very helpful. And between the three of us, we should be able to, to submit it without having it to be returned after it leaves Kim's desk, okay? Okay, any other questions about this? All right, as they come up, it's all right, we get it. It's not a problem, feel free to ask. And if the same question arises more than once, we'll put a note out to the group because there's a chance that that's gonna happen. All right, Miss Kim, what about um, invoicing? For invoicing, you know, we don't have a sample of anything. Um, you're, you're allowed to submit uh, whatever invoice template you use. The only, um, the thing, the one line item that they ask that you make sure that you have on there every month or how, when, are you, when you will be invoicing is if um, no services have been performed in California, that needs to be stated 
um, w you know, somewhere in bold, or you can highlight it, or however you'd like to make it very um, noticeable. Or if you did work in California, then they would need to know exactly how many hours you worked and what you were doing there. So. Okay, I'm just type, typing notes in the chat box. So if you are working in California, you have to state some specifics and exactly what are you charging for that? How many of your hours are being charged while you were working in the state of California? Because yes. your taxes are gonna be different for that and accounting will toss it back to you. Yes. The most recent thing is that if you're not working in California, they also want to see you state that clearly on your invoice. So just say something like, none of the above duties were performed in California during this month or something like that. Right. Is that acceptable? Uh, sure. Or a really you know, simple line could be no services performed in California. Okay, and that has to do with taxes, which um, uh, you may or may not have an accountant or somebody that, that oversees your taxes, but just know that um, those hours that you're um, taxed for California is going to look different than your own, and you'll need to be aware of that, and you'll have to claim that on your own. So that's just kind of a heads up. Um, I'm happy to talk to you about how I've done that. Um, how I did that in the past and I bet you Rick would talk to you too so um, just just to be aware because it's higher than what you may be paying in the state where you are now um, let's see what else about invoices so under duties um, we want to know we want to know frequency of meetings. Um, you don't have to give meeting minutes. You don't have to get to that granularity in the, um, around the duties or activities performed. Um, we just want to know to be able to track, okay, so you know, this amount of work was done and, and this is how we know. So um, something measurable for the books. Does that make sense? You have questions about that? What I'm gonna ask that you do is um, so that I can keep a hand on how much money we're spending for, for these specific kinds of projects, if you would run those invoices through me for the time being, and, um, and if I've, I'll, I'll help you kind of um, do the first couple, and then you, you can use that as a template and you shouldn't have to change a whole bunch unless your job duties are changing as we go. And in some cases that may, that may happen. So um, we'll get the first couple in really good shape and then, and then take it from there. So I will ask that you send it to me and then I'll send it back to you and, and um, you will send it on to Kim and just, uh, and just CC me. So I know it's gone through. So I don't, does it, does that make sense to everybody? And as we get a little further down the road, we may make some adjustments to um, some of that process and protocol, but we just wanna make sure that you have the support that you need to submit what, um, what we're asking of you in the way that uh, the CO wants it. Okay, questions. None. Rick, have anything else? No, I'm good. good. Anybody has questions? Okay. Okay, so this is the sticky stuff, you know, this is the stuff that has to be exactly right. And, um, and we want to make sure that 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 you have what you need in order to not be frustrated and get it in and get your money back and in a timely manner it takes it um i would i would give it up to 30 days to get these refunds um the travel refund will happen generally a little quicker 
than the monthly, you can expect the monthly to be anywhere from 30 to 45 days for invoicing. Um, Kim, is there, did I miss something on that, on the time part? No, it, it's, you know, it's hard to say every month, but um, accounting usually likes people to, you know, give us at least 30 days. It shouldn't take longer than that unless there was a bit, there was a problem and um, we had to go back and forth before resubmitting. So, okay. Also, if you can get it in about the same time every month, um, also it needs to be um, signed by Jerry. So depending on his schedule also, um, that yes. will determine so when, when, got, it, when it's approved. If he's traveling or whatever, there will be a slight delay. Is, I think is what yes. he's saying. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And he's on the road quite a bit, but, um, but he, I, they're pretty I just good. had a question there for Kim. Um, just on the timing, is there a, for the ambassadors, and, and maybe it doesn't apply to them because it's off the, you know, on different um, section for the accounting, does it matter like the, the, the time of the month because there's certain days when accounting, you know, has the books closed for last month's stuff, say on the 5th or something like that, the reports have to be in by a certain day of the month, or does that not apply to, the, to these guys? Um, I don't believe it applies. We, we, we get invoices, you know, all at all at different times of the month for different things. So um, the only time of the year that has strict deadlines is um, when we end our year, but it, that doesn't really, that won't really affect you guys. Okay, any other questions? All right. Well, I think that um, that probably concludes it. Kim, is there anything else you'd like to share? I don't think so. Um, but, you know, feel free to contact me by email or phone if you do have a question. And we'll help you out so that hopefully um, it, this can be done in the quickest way possible. So please feel, feel free, free to contact us. Fantastic. All right, you guys. Well, we will see you next week. We're really excited about getting together again and reconnecting. I'm excited for you all to, to have a chance to talk to each other about the different projects that you're involved in. We're missing Matt and um, the whole IE2ET team and um, Nicolette. And I guess that's it for now. Um, Alexandra won't be there next week. Um, and Helene, what did you end up doing about your hotel? Um, I'm staying uh, Monday and Tuesday night. I can't, I can't afford the third night. It's, it's $400 a night, and I think the GSA rate is only 200 and something. So I just, have to, I just have to eat the rest of that and hopefully get it back on my taxes at the end of the year. You know, um, there are some outlying hotels. Did you check on those? Yeah. Or Right there, but yeah, so no luck, huh? Mm -mm. Okay, mm -mm. okay, well, that's a big bummer for sure. All right, well, um, then Alexandra and Helene, we are going to see in Salt Lake City in October anyway, and so we'll be doing um, kind of a, a little community thing there with you guys. And then we will be having a monthly um, chit chat. And we'll set it up. The first one will. The first one will be in uh, October, and we'll just go from there. And these will be pretty informal, and we'll make a decision about what's working. And we may end up changing the format as we go, and that's okay. But my hope is that you all create a community for each other and with yourselves, and and um, be able to uh, use each other as sounding boards and idea bouncers and what ifs and that kind of thing so um that is that is my my hope and that's what i think we can probably pull off pretty easily with this particular community so we will model the behaviors that we hope to see in our own communities that that we're overseeing okay so you um have received uh skills commons 
your, the way that your skills commons email will be laid out, but you have not received passwords yet. That's because the actual account is still in, in the works. It hasn't been fully set up. Once it is, you'll be hearing from someone about what the password is. I'm not sure exactly who will be connecting with you yet. It might be me, but I don't know that. And then you will have access to a skills commons um, uh, email setup. Any questions about anything else at this point that we can help you with? All right, you guys. Well, we will see you on Tuesday of next week, if not Monday afternoon or evening um, as you're wandering around. Safe travels to everybody, and um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. See you soon. All right. See you soon. See Thank you, soon. you so much for your time. Thanks. Thanks for doing this today, too. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Okay.